Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. Today I have another exciting PlayFab tutorial for you. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about cloud scripts and how to set up your coding environment to create Azure functions. Now to get started, there's two main documentations that we'll be following along with. The first is this quick start write a PlayFab cloud script using Azure functions. And the second page is found within the prerequisite section of this documentation. And that is this quick start, create a C-sharp function in Azure using Visual Studio Code. Now both of these pages I'll link to in the description below. This documentation has a section on configuring your environment, which we'll be following along with. Now the first thing that you'll need to do if you haven't already is create an Azure account. Now not only can you follow along with the links in this documentation, you can also find them in the description below this video. And so I'll follow the link in the documentation, which will take us to the Microsoft Azure homepage. Now I believe a free account is available as long as you stay within a certain usage limit or if you don't use any paid services. And regardless if you're signing up for a free account or a pay-as-you-go account, you'll probably need to enter in some credit card information. But even the pay-as-you-go option won't charge you unless you exceed those limits. And in my experience so far, it's relatively inexpensive. Now if you click the sign up for free option, it'll ask you to sign in with a Microsoft account. And so if you follow all the prompts and you agree to the terms of service, Eventually, it'll tell you whether or not you qualify for a free account or if you need to sign up for a pay-as-you-go. And so there's that. But I've already created an account, so once you've created your account and you've signed in, it should take you to the Azure dashboard, which looks like this. The next thing that we need to do as part of this first step is create an Azure subscription. So we'll click on this key icon that says subscriptions, and in here we can click the plus sign that says add. This will bring up a form where we can type in our subscription name, select our billing information, and our plan, after which we'll click Review and Create. For the next step, you'll need to install the .NET 6.0 SDK onto your computer. So we'll follow this link, and on this page we can select the installer for whatever platform you're on. I'll select it for Windows. We can then open this installer and follow the wizard until we click on Install. Once .NET is finished installing onto your computer, you'll need to install Azure Function Core Tools. I'm going to click on the Windows 64-bit version, and I'll open the installer. You'll need to follow the wizard and agree to the terms of service, after which you can click Install. Once Azure Function Core Tools is installed on your computer, you'll need to install Visual Studio Code. So we'll click on the link to Visual Studio Code, and here I'll click Download for Windows. You'll need to go through this wizard and accept their terms of service, after which you can click Install. Once you have Visual Studio Code installed and opened on your computer, we'll need to install the c -sharp extension for Visual Studio Code. So we'll click that link, which will take us to this page here, in which we can click Install. This window will ask us if it can open the extension within Visual Studio Code, and we can just click Continue. This will then take us to the extension, after which you can just click Install. And the last thing that we need to install is the Azure Function extension for Visual Studio Code. So we'll click this link and we'll click Install, after which Visual Studio Code will open and we can click Install on the extension. After all of this, you should have a new tab on the left-hand side of your Visual Studio Code with the Azure icon. If you don't have it, you might need to restart Visual Studio Code. But now that we have all of this installed on our computer, we can go ahead and create our local project. And so in Visual Studio Code, with the Azure tab selected, we'll go down to the Workspace window and click the plus sign, after which we'll click Create Function. And here in the documentation, we have all of the settings that we need to select for our workspace. We'll want to choose c -sharp for the language, .NET 6, HTTP Trigger, you'll need to give your function a name and a namespace. You'll select Anonymous for the authorization level, and you'll select Add to Workspace. So in this drop-down menu, we'll select c -sharp, .NET 6.0, HTTP Trigger, I'll give my function a name and a namespace, I'll select Anonymous, and add to workspace. Now in the documentation, there's a note for if you don't have a .6 option, in which case it says to make sure that you've installed .NET 6.0 SDK. And then in Visual Studio Code, you can press F1, type preference open user settings, then search for Azure Function Project Runtime and change the default version to tilde 4. Now after I select Add to Workspace, Visual Studio Code will create a template for an HTTP trigger function. The next thing that we need to do is sign in to our Azure account. 
So up in the resource window, we'll click on sign into Azure. This will take us to a sign in page on our browser where we can log in to our Azure account. Once you've logged in, you can go back to Visual Studio Code and you should be able to see the subscription that we created already. After which we can create a function app. Now a function app will contain all of the functions that you create and deploy to Azure that deal with one single project. So to create a function app, we'll click the plus sign next to resources after which we'll select create a function app in Azure from the drop down menu. We'll then need to give our function app a name and we'll select the region. Now this might take a minute or two, but once your resource group and function app have been created, we can now deploy our local function to our function app. So down in the workspace window, we'll click the little cloud icon with an arrow pointing up. We'll then select our new function app and we'll click deploy. This will also take another minute or two, but once it's finished deploying, we can go to our Azure dashboard and under function app, here I have my old function that I've been using for my crypto games app and my new demo function that I created for this tutorial. Now that's everything that we're gonna cover in this lesson on how to set up your Visual Studio code environment for creating Azure functions to use for PlayFab. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and subscribe to my channel so you can be up to date with all my latest videos.